It's my pleasure to introduce to you Stephanie Mann. Stephanie is the Executive Director of Safe Kids Now, an organization that is nationwide and growing. Stephanie is an author. She has written several books about the safety of our neighborhoods in many aspects, from the entire neighborhood and community right down to every individual child. Stephanie is known throughout the nation for her work to help keep us safe. Please welcome Stephanie Mann. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. It's so nice to be here and have a chance to talk to you about issues that are very close to my heart. Our issue today is the first of a series about ISIS. Mm -hmm. So Stephanie, because you're the expert here, I'm going to turn the floor over to you and let's get rolling. Well, um, I'm going to talk about ISIS based on my personal experience of working in high crime neighborhoods now for 39 years. And you're seeing exactly the same behavior. It's called human behavior, uh, where you have a gang leader and you have his followers. The difference in the United States is that we have police departments to stop that uh, tribal behavior into escalating. Uh, in the case of ISIS, or um, where you have these uh, very dangerous groups, this behavior, it accelerates over a period of time. It's kind of like the man that abuses his wife. Uh, the behavior doesn't just go away it accelerates over a period of time. So what you're looking at with ISIS um, is a culture of brutality, tribal men that are barbarians, that are spiritually off-centered. They know that power and brutality work, and that's the only thing they know. When we went into Iraq and Afghanistan, and we wanted to you know, change the hearts and minds of people, it's not going to work like that. We walked into a hornet's nest. What will work is when we become the example, when we change our behavior and understand what's happening in America with child abuse and uh, gang behavior, uh, we really haven't stopped it at the core in the United States. So how can we possibly stop it at the core uh, in these countries where brutality is running rampant. Um, there are about 30,000 um, terrorists in Iraq. It's kind of like the abusive husband. You're not going to uh, negotiate his, change his behavior. It changes from within. You ha people have to change their own behavior. Uh, one of the ways you do that is you can um, get people to uh, see a different point of view, and that's what we hope to accomplish, but it di literally did not work. This primitive behavior is all about power and control. You know, when you have people uh, that are out of, uh, well, let me say this, spiritual ignorance is the single biggest problem we've got in this country and around the world. I think it's very important that you explain to people what spiritual ignorance is. The truth of the matter is that ignorance is ignorance and getting out from under it requires a little wisdom and a little help. Quite a few years ago, I worked with the homeless in uh, Oakland, California with the Mother Right Foundation. And I learned about people being spiritually ignorant when I worked with the homeless because many of them uh, had been terribly abused as children. And what happened, there was so much anger that they would do anything. They couldn't even listen to each other. The disconnect we've got in this country with homeless people and violence um, is about the breakdown of the family. And let me show you what I mean. Uh, if you can see this, this yes. is a chart. This is a spiritually centered child that's protected. The spiritually centered child has a conscience uh, understands their own intuition, understands that they have instincts to keep them safe, and a conscience. What happens when a child is abused, they can go two ways, one way or another, based on their own personality. They can become a bigger bully. The red is a bully. 
uh, or they can become the victim, which is the blue. And these are spiritually off-centered individuals, and then they are attracted to each other because that's the behavior they've seen in their own home. So this is the abusive husband. This is the victim wife. This is the gang leader. These are his followers. This is the ISIS leader, and this is all of his followers. In other words, we cannot have a sadist without a masochist. <laughs> yes, we've got, we've got a huge problem here, but all of us have to be better informed about what is really going on and how we're going to stop this, because this is a holy war, it's a spiritual war, and the fight is against the Christians and the Jews, and that is because they are much more enlightened than the people that are abusing each other. Disbalance seems to be directly related to assuming that someone else is responsible for our behavior, our lives, ourselves. There's no personal responsibility here. The abuser doesn't want to be responsible for his own feelings of inadequacy, so he projects them and forces them on someone else. The victim accepts that because they're terrified. And they don't stand up and, and take responsibility for their life because they're terrified. How can we work our way around this and help people get out of it? Well, there are quite a few ways to get out of it. First, understanding what the problem is and knowing that you have the power within yourself to take full responsibility for all your decisions and your conduct. For example, uh, when I was abandoned as a 15-year-old in Mexico City and didn't speak the language, I had no place to go, so I made a direct connection with God and I said, I need help. What do I do now? And I got that inner guidance for myself. And that's what one way to do it. Another way to do it is to have a supportive family that teaches you that. Or maybe you go to church or to a synagogue where they teach you how to be spiritually centered and protected by making your connection with a higher purpose, a higher God. Uh, so all of us can make that dis de determination ourselves, and that means taking personal responsibility for our own behavior. Uh, so that is the po those are biblical teachings. Uh, what's happened with the religion, and you've seen the, um, let's see, um, Charles Manson used religion to control his followers. So you can see how he manipulated religion. Uh, it wasn't just Charles Manson. We've had a number of, David Koresh was another one in Waco, Texas, that manipulated his followers, and they all died in an inferno in Waco, Texas. And uh, probably the biggest one was Reverend Jim Jones in this country and 900, 900 of his followers committed suicide or were killed uh, when they were down in Guyana. Um, this was in, in the 70s. So these are all men that have misused religion. Well, that's exactly what you're seeing with ISIS. They are misusing the Muslim religion to uh, forward their own power, their own agenda. That's all they know. They're tribal men. So to walk in there and think that we can change it uh, without changing ourselves uh, and understanding what needs to take place, we need to become a more enlightened country so that we can make that progress in the United States. So is that, does that make it clear? If humanity could realize if it isn't good, good for all concerned, it isn't God, in other words, if they could learn to spell God with two O's, they could get out from under letting people use God and the devil to beat them over the head with, control them, manipulate them, and steal their lives, because those are just shysters. If it isn't good for all concerned, right. it's wrong. <laughs> That's it's true. Wrong take it back never mind arguing over what's written in what book and who said what let us not talk about who is right let us get to the core of ourselves and do 
what is right and that is innate that's inside of you you feel it everybody everybody can look within themselves and find that strong part within themselves and they know what's right i remember <laughs> hearing you speak one time and you said to the children if it feels wrong listen to your inner self that's if right. it feels wrong don't do it if it feels wrong it's telling you something that's innate you know that's one of the reasons why you see these isis men covering their faces and peeking out behind hoods they know it's wrong in their heart they know it's wrong they don't want to be identified if you're proud of something you will stand up and speak up about it and and show yourself but if it's wrong you're going to hide and you're going to do horrible things it's it's a atrocities that's happening to christians and jews around the world but also to the muslim people themselves it's outrageous that we have allowed this as a united group of people we all need to come together and begin to look at how we can make a huge impact this is a holy war for the spirit of mankind and if we do not acknowledge that and understand that this is a holy war uh we're going to really struggle here uh the military alone cannot solve this problem it's going to have to come from within the people setting an example people coming together in our communities because what you're hearing with these lone wolves these are people that feel alienated from their community. Uh, the lone wolf mentality of these two boys that uh, uh, in the Boston bombing, somehow they didn't feel that they were connected to the community. We have to do a much better job of getting people connected. And that happens through, and, and if you look at our website, safekidsnow.com, you will find that we have jobs up there for us individually what we can do, what you can do for your community. We've got all kinds of information to help you and you can join our network because there is no reason for this to continue like this and this can be turned around. Well, look at the difficulty with the person who is at the leader who's destroying everybody and everything. Inside, if destruction is his only way to deal with things, He's an empty human being. Uh, he's lost. He is. He, and, he lost. And it, it's like the kids. Remember the kids when they used to play, I'm the king of Bunker's Hill, and the little boys would fight to get on top of the hill. So yeah. they spend their whole life fighting as adults to stay on top of the hill, and their future is already laid. Someday someone will slay them and be on top of the hill, and their life is right. wasted. Not only that, they contribute nothing. 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 Well, but destruction. If they're, uh, that's all they can do. They are destructive, and that is that makes them feel powerful. They have external power. What what we're talking about is the internal power that all of us have to make a difference, to improve our communities, to be enlightened ourselves. Some people take take up meditation to look within themselves and change their own behavior. Some people take up prayer look within themselves and ask for guidance. Some people never do that. I, as I said, I worked with the homeless. Well, I worked with the homeless for four and a half years. I have never heard such horror stories uh, from homeless people of beatings, child abuse, domestic violence, victims, terrible victims. They lose themselves. They have no connectedness. They're out on the streets. Are we going to stop this or not? And we need to stop it here and start being an example for what it's going to take to have a true democratic society where people can participate, where kids grow up to feel loved and cherished and uh, feel connected. There was a, um, um, there's a book that was written by um, uh, Malcolm Gladwell and that book is called Outliers. And he tells the story of about a community in Rosetta, Pennsylvania. And two doctors were having coffee. And one of the doctors said to the other doctor, wow, I've got so much heart attacks in my community. People are dying of cancer. They're dying of all kinds of diseases. And the doctor from Rosetta said, really? 
He said, the people in Rosetta only die of old age. He said, what? So they said, hey, this is important. Let's put a study together and find out why is Rosetta different from the other communities? Well, they got a grant. They went out. They did this study. They thought it was, in, you know, maybe it was ancestry. Maybe it was behavior. Maybe they ate certain foods. They spent two months as, talking to all the people in Rosetta and finding out what is going on here. How come? Well, it didn't have anything to do with any of that. People smoked. They drank. They were overweight. They were just like everybody else. They couldn't figure out what was the difference. Well, they began to look at what is happening in the community. People were strongly connected. They were connected within their families. They were connected within their neighborhoods. They all went to uh, a little church in the middle of the town. Uh, they participated. They belonged to all kinds of social groups. So when people are connected and feel they belong, feel they are heard, feel they are listened to, then you're going to have some peace. You're going to have peace in your community. You're going to have peace in your family. You're going to have peace in your own life. So when we look at all this bad behavior, we should be asking ourselves, how much pain do we want in our lives? Well, it's time for us to turn that around. When you mentioned being connected, mm -hmm. the person who is destructive, the gang leader, the ISIS leader, is not connected to himself. That's right. He's not. He, he is not. The greatest feeling that a human being can feel is to look back and say, I did it. I succeeded. I helped. I, I created this. I made a difference. I had value in what I could give. Right. The gang leader has not found his own talent and ability and gift. Absolutely. He has not found it. And even though the community can gather around him, they have to change his thinking to look inside of himself to find who he truly is, not who he can beat up, not who he can destroy, but what is his gift. And what? everybody, everybody has gifts. Exactly. Who you are. And if he doesn't believe in that, yeah. then he doesn't know how to stand up and take the responsibility for his life, his gift, his capacity to make life better. Right. We have a lot of teaching to do. The minority community are incredibly strong and they can teach us a lot about inner spirit and we need to cross pollinate. I've seen that over and over again that on this side and this side, if they came together, we'd be unstoppable. There's, there would be no ISIS. We have so many parents today that believe that, that love means you give your child everything no matter what. And it's that's okay to give your child wonderful things, but not to give them to the point of irresponsibility. If that child doesn't learn how to be responsible while he's in your care, do you think he's going to be suddenly responsible when he's 18 and you kick him out on the street? He's going to hate you. Or he's going to move back in with you and drive you crazy. Exactly. <laughs> you, you know, there's an old proverb that says, give a man a fish, he'll live for a day. Teach him how to fish, he'll live a lifetime. Teach your right. child how to be self-sufficient, how to be responsible for little things, bigger things, and etc. Teach your child to be responsible for his life, and then he'll be safe. Otherwise, you're crippling him. You're not helping him. Absolutely. You're, you're making life very miserable for your own kids because they don't have the tools to live life successfully. That's a lot of our problem with the kids on the street. They actually do not know how to be responsible because okay. they were they were diapered and burped until they're 19 or 20 years old. Yeah. And they don't know how to deal with real life. Yeah. And, exactly. and they're filled with resentment. This is this hurts a kid so bad. Yeah, you got to let them make their mistakes and pay the consequences for their mistakes at an early age. All kids make mistakes, and that's okay. That's how they learn. You learn more from your mistakes than you do from uh, your successes. Um, you know, mistakes teach us what to do and what not to do. Look how many light bulbs Thomas Edison created that didn't work before he got one that did. 
That's right. Abraham Lincoln ran for office. How many times before he was elected? I mean, you have to work at life. You have to understand what life is all about and stop looking for the fast track to stardom, the fast track to money. Those are all false. You know, maybe you see somebody that did it, but the percentages are very low. On And look at uh, Justin Bieber, for example. He was young and made famous at an early age, and now he's really messed up. <laughs> Guess why? He never had the tools, never had the tools to help him learn how to take charge of his life and be successful. He just had money. Uh, a lot of these young Hollywood stars have money, and their emphasis is on how you look on the outside. No, it's how you look on the inside that counts. If the children are taught to be responsible and their own inner talent, their own inner ability, their own inner strength, then they can control their life. And I don't care how much you dump on them, you can give them 50,000 Stradivariuses. It won't help if they don't learn how to play. If they can't play music, what's the point? That's right. They've got to be in an orchestra where they learn teamwork, where right. they learn how to get along, and everybody is on the same page and have the same rules. Uh, we live in a society in America today where nobody seems to have any rules. We can, sh we can turn on the police. We don't respect authority. What's with that? Uh, if you're in a, in a bad situation, you better respect authority because they're the ones that are going to come and pull you uh, out of a fire or uh, out of an a, a encounter with a bad guy. You need to put your faith in yourself, have, know how to handle your anger. Uh, if you are confronted with a problem, you learn to keep quiet and listen and find out what you can do to solve that problem. You can't just assume that uh, things are going to go great for you and you don't have to work at it. Life is about work. It's about un being enlightened and understanding where you are, and that's called self-awareness. If you have no self-awareness, you don't know what you're doing. Self-awareness is the honesty that you look within yourself and say, you know, why did I tell that lie? Why did I cheat on that test? Why did I hit that guy? Why do I hurt? I'm hurting myself. Why am I doing that? And be honestly evaluated, because all of us can do this. Be evaluating where you are and where you want to be, and you can't do it by just rushing through life and not understanding your own awareness. You've got to have self-awareness and self-discipline. The greatest um, gift that we can give our children and ourselves is to find that self-awareness. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest gift there is because it will guide us through life with peace, harmony, confidence, productivity, and the greatest feeling you can ever have is to know that you personally mm -hmm. did something that came from right. you that was a contribution. You personally, and that feeling's there if anybody ever knows about it or not. It's the greatest high you can have can't buy that with marijuana no. or, or drugs, you can't. No, and you can't necessarily teach it. People, you look at, it, look at the many people that are uh, down and out, and yet they don't want to change. They don't want to change their lives. They're, they're sitting in a gutter and they say, I can't do it, I can't do it. They can do it. I've seen people do it. It's just that you have to understand where you are and your willingness to change yourself to go up the ladder again. If you're down, you got to get up and get going. you got to take responsibility for where you are right today. You are where you're supposed to be today. Now, what are you going to make it to for tomorrow? All of us can change. All of us can have choice. We need to reach out and help each other do that. Stephanie, you are such a marvelous teacher and you have done so much and you have wonderful books and wonderful instructions for almost anything you could need or think of that we talked about today. And this series that we're doing on the ISIS problem and the psychological things around it will continue. This is part one. 
Will you inform our listening audience where your website is so they'll have access to getting much more information? All right, all I have to do is go to www.safekidsnow.com. And, you know, we do free coaching. We will help you. Just, it says get started right in the front, right off the top of the page. So sign up and uh, we'll be happy to answer your questions, uh, give you some guidance. If you want to get involved in taking charge of your neighborhood, if you'd like to help us, uh, or if you have an organization, we have a, a network. We have a national network. Uh, we're reaching out to people from Maine to Florida to Washington, uh, down to California. So join us, become part of our network, and we are going to make changes here because we cannot accept ISIS, the brutality of it all, but we need to change and look within ourselves. So join us and uh, I look forward to hearing from you. You can contact me and I'd be happy to talk to you. We also have contacts coming in from other countries. We're expanding. Yes, we do. I had a gentleman contact me from Pakistan and, he's, and I, I sent four questions to him and I said, he said, can you help me? And I said, okay, here, answer these questions and I'll see what area, where you are in the scheme of things and see how we can help. So we've got some very interesting people that are coming on board. And your television shows are playing in Australia, England, Dubai, and in some of the Taliban nations. So right. we have a following there because they need this. And because we know that they're human beings that have human rights and we reach out to them with love, understanding, and hope. Definitely, because there is a lot of hope and there are a lot of people that have very strong um, spiritual connections that are there to help you, uh, that understand that, uh, you know, you don't want to be controlled. You want to have be liberated, but liberty comes from within. Yes, it does. And Stephanie, you also have books for kids as well as, as well as kids of all ages. You have books for little kids, don't you? Well, as a matter of fact, uh, we partnered with the Carr Foundation and she uh, and that organization has have wonderful books for kids on self-esteem and bullying and uh, diabetes and all kinds of problems. So uh, we're out there to help you. Contact us at safe neighborhoods at gmail.com thank you you've been listening to stephanie mann executive director of safe kids now stephanie you're marvelous thank you rebecca i was happy to be with you